you like this episode, please subscribe, share with others, rate and review so we can continue to bring you great programming. This is The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. This is The Thing About Cars. I'm one of your hosts, Mickey Desai. Around the table, we have trivia czar Tim. How are you, Tim? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Everybody. Yep. Ben, how are you? Uh, pretty damn awesome. How about you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, Misty, I don't want to ask what that look on your face. Uh, Moist and mad. <laughs> Eminem, moist and mad. We're going to come back to that. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> What, um, how am I? I guess I'm questioning choices I've made in my life now. <laughs> Miss, Misty is looking resplendent in what looks like new glasses and a oh, new these dude. Are just, these are literally just El Chipa reading glasses because I'm really? old. I'm they're, old. They're kind of hot, actually. Thanks. But they do look good on you. I know you're not old. Yeah. Nice. Well, Can well, you well, use well, that line of, uh, you know, these are what I wear when I don't care what I look like. <laughs> I literally just have my hair pulled back in a ponytail, but it's getting like super long. But thank you guys. I really appreciate y'all. So why are you mad today? Well, I'm mad because two weeks ago I had to have the window mechanism replaced in Claudette. Now Claudette is six years old. Right. Almost seven, because she's twenty sixteen model. So and I've been having some problems with the navigation system. Apparently, it doesn't want to boot up if it's below five degrees Celsius. You know, I mean, it's fine if it's damp, but it's apparently it's the cold temperatures. And I'm thinking, you know, this is starting to be a concern, mm-hmm. you know, because I didn't want to end up in the same position as my best friend here um, where, you know, like a 1200 euro repair was more than the value of the car. Right. Right. It's certainly a situation. Yeah. So. I go take my car to the dealership and I started looking and I've actually come out with like some, you know, some like new models of the MX-5. Yes. Um, So instead of just like three different types, you've got low end and then there's like four others. And so I was like, let me look at this. So I start looking and just one up from base was exactly what I wanted, mainly because the other three had really ugly leather. I don't like white leather and I don't like brown leather and I didn't want the Alicante. So I was like, this is what I want. (laughs) And, you know, this very small package, because it came with a lot of, uh, actually a lot of stuff that Claudette doesn't have, like the reverse camera and uh, traffic sign recognition and all this other stuff. It was really reasonable. It was like 45 grand. (laughs) And so I was like, thank you, Dave. Love you. (laughs) My favorite Dave. I'm just taking notes. Okay, so so I talked to the little sales order. guy. I talked to the little sales guy who, you know, was just, you know, just about as cute as Dave, not quite close. And um, he's like, okay, I'll send you a quote. And I'm like, okay. I, I don't know if y'all remember the last time we had this conversation when they actually sent me the registered letter in the really nice print. They were like, we'll give you 17 grand. Yes. I was like, oh, yeah. cool, cool. So... He emails me and I open the quote and I don't know. Can you still see the bruise on the chin where my jaw hit the ground? Because <laughs> the quote came out right about the same as a little configurator Dumaflachi on the Mazda Boot and L site. Yeah. And uh, so he's like, okay, he's like, uh, so we'll offer you for a trade-in for 45K car. We'll offer you 21K for your current car. And I said, wow, that's amazing. I need a new car. And my husband <laughs> was like, my husband was like, no, you don't need a new car. I'm like, there's lots of things I don't need, like a husband. And <laughs> crap in my life. But yeah, here I am. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but I'm kind of concerned. And he's like, you know, and I'm like, plus my birthday is coming up in April, like Easter Sunday, first of all. Okay, so like I need that car out front on that Sunday with bunny ears and a bunny tail, first of all. <laughs> so second of all, it's a really big birthday. 
And oh dear God, I'm about to announce how old I am in front of God and everybody in the general public. <laughs> and I'm going to be 50, which is a huge Woo! birthday. Woohoo! I made it. Oh, with like, kids. you know, with like 15% of my brain cells intact. So, you know, I'm doing good, you know, but like, especially in the Netherlands, 50 is huge. You know, and he's like, yeah, but I bought that car mm -hmm. for you, like, you know, like six years ago for Valentine's Day. And I said, exactly. My 50th birthday, infinitely more important than Valentine's Day. So if I'm, by my reckoning, and I'm not normally good at math, but this time it's pretty solid. I said, you actually owe me two cars. <laughs> you know, That's so at the end of the day. I'm not getting the new car, but he did agree to get the reverse camera put into Claudette at his own expense. And I need a formal dress for um, company party in March. So he has to not only take me to that to, and buy me the dress and take me to have it fitted, but his mom's coming with me, with us as well. So, and I'm just kind of getting started on that. So that's why, man. Because I wanted a new car. And he was like, you just want a new car because I got a new car. I said, no, I want a new car because I don't want to have to deal with repairing this other crap. Well, that's all the time we've got today. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on The Thing About Cars. <laughs> yeah. So wait, Sorry. Misty. What? Uh, forgive me, but I don't understand why you're mad. I mean, you're oh, you're getting wanted. you're getting the stuff out of the deal, right? You're you're getting a reverse camera, you're getting a a cocktail dress, you're getting presumably a cocktail dress, some sort of formal. And uh... well, actually, formal, formal. This is beyond cocktail. But I mean, ah. well, yeah. I mean, but you know, the point was was you know, like I said, the car is six years old and almost seven. And he's like, well, it should be able to go 10. And by the time, but by the time it goes to 10 years old, I'm certainly not going to get 21K for it, no matter how good I take care of it, which is what I'm getting now. So in three years, four years, I'm not going to get the same amount. And I can guarantee you that the level that I want in four years is going to be more than 45. And you really, really want the car, the new car. Well, I mean, I'm, I don't want to change the type of car I have. And, you know, and then I'm concerned that, you know, I guess my biggest fear is that in four years, I won't be able to get a car with a standard transmission. And then what's the point? Yeah, that's true. That's see, see, a concern th for these, everybody. These are the things yeah. that I'm thinking about, you know, and and then plus, plus, I could have gotten the key fob with the matching pink color to my car. <laughs> These are important points to think about. Well, I know what I would do if I were in your shoes. Throw a temper tantrum and cry. No, that's no, I can't do that. <laughs> but actually, I've seen I've seen him do that, and and he's an ugly crier. Well, so am I. <laughs> so am I. I mean, I, I, right. I've, you know, I, I even tried the. I just really, really, really want a new car, and he just went no. Well, should we put it up to a general vote here amongst the five of us? Four of us, rather. Sure. So, well, we, we know where my vote's going. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so we know where Misty's vote's going. Dave, you got a vote on the matter? You know, I think I'm going to abstain from this one. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to foment family strife. But because because I have a birthday coming up, and I'm being, per my partner, being incredibly unhelpful in helping him get a gift. So, <laughs> well, your partner uh. can get me a new car for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's he could. He's it's, not a combined to. Gift. it's a combined gift. <laughs> Tim, what do you think Misty should do? Uh, you know, I'm of the drive it till you die mentality. Yeah. So that and, and besides, yeah. if you wait four to five years, you know, you, that could be the next generation of MX5 and could be awesomer than what you currently have. That it could be true. Ben, what do you think? Uh well, I am of the drive it till you die thing. Uh that's not the point here. <laughs> <laughs> I think if she wants a new car, she should get the new car. And I, assuming, I yeah. Assuming that it'll be awesomer than the current car. Well, even if it's just a little bit more awesome, I think she should get it. It's her birthday. Yeah. And there's nothing says you can't buy a present to yourself. That's exactly right, Misty. Well, the only the only significant obstacle to that <clears throat> is when we bought Claudette. Claudette is actually fully in his name because uh -huh. I wasn't working at the time, so I have to have his signature. Uh, you know, it's yeah. kind of kind of one of those ups and downsides to being like legally married. 
All right. No, I think you, yeah, you're just going to have to you know, resort to sexual embargo. That's it. That's their bum. With Lysistrata, everybody gird your loins or whatever it is you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. There we go. So you know, I, I, I guess I guess I need to go find you know like like that big you know 1980s grandma polyester high neck nightgown. Stop! That, this know, is a family friendly show. <laughs> well, you, you know the the, the 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 one in winter time when it's like yeah. really really dry and you crawl into bed and somebody touches you like yeah. you can actually see the spark. Yes, Mickey, yes. Mickey has a whole collection of those. <laughs> like a, a different kind of spark in your relationship. Oh exactly. man, it exactly. works though. Exactly, yeah. it works. All right, so well, Misty, if you need backup, let's let's figure out. I'm gonna. I'm hoping to be in Europe at some point in April, maybe, if okay. I can afford it. Come for my so. birthday celebration because I basically oh. just commandeered the whole month. <laughs> right. Yeah, and and I already told my manager I'm taking from Good Friday to Easter Monday off because my birthday is on Sunday and I will not be in a fit state to work on Monday. Good. Just letting you know that already. <laughs> there you go. See. <laughs> yep. Although right. I will say, yep. I will say on the on the good side, the Mazda Six. Yep. I have not driven it yet. So, okay. But riding. Oh my God. I'm so happy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like, yes. Now, so now I can actually wait to go to Italy for, you know, the first three weeks in June because this does have the seat cooling and I'm super anxious to try that out. It's nice. Uh, Yeah. yeah. I've I've done seat cooling in another car and it was nice, but. So that, 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 that's the ups and the downs, you know? Yep. All right. Last one we met, uh, Banu had given us a question, and Robert Drake has given us a question uh, that we're going to quickly talk about. We're not going to do we can, we don't have trivia. We have one trivia question to do today. So let's do a little bit of car trivia. Grand trivia auto. Yeah. Tim, do you remember this one? What is it? One. What is a Monterey label? No, I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. What is a Monroney label? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I believe you are. Um, yeah. Yes. I think when you read the possible answers, I'll be able to yep. do my great scan, fill in my scantron mm-hmm. correctly. Exactly. All right. Get your number two pencils ready. Um, choice A, what is a Mon- Monroney label? A, records produced and distributed for free with no royalties to radio stations to buy General Motors in the late 70s. The vinyl records featured popular musicians along with a few advertisements for Pontiac and or Buick vehicles. Monroney was slang derived from money and no royalty. Or B, Monroney refers to the 25-ounce bottle of Monroney scotch that was packed along with two glasses and the glove box of the 1959 Cadillac, Cadillac Eldorado Biarritz. Or is it C? Monroney was Monroney the new car window sticker showing pricing options and other details mandated by a bill sponsored by Oklahoma Senator Almer Mike Stillwell Monroney in 1958. So I'll answer that question at the end of the show. A Monroney label. Um, but Banu raised this question last time, which we we didn't really have time to answer for the last show. He says this photo, and of course viewers can't see it, and I'm sending everybody a link here in chat. Uh, of the car in question he's describing a yellow sob which was a vehicle that was purposed for something it was not originally meant for he says he says initiated discussion of times listeners employed or witnessed the employment of a vehicle for a purpose it was not meant for grammar um as a peripheral image i submit on ebay at auction i participated in at the beginning of the pandemic quarantine a 1996 sob runway friction tester was built for this purpose and why was he bidding on it? I still don't know why he was bidding on it, but uh, Bono is sort of into older sobs. So I may have, yeah. the, I may have the And just for our here. listeners to describe this thing, this is a yellow sub 900 with amber safety lights on the roof uh, and some nice like rally style driving lights up front. And it's got a big blue stripe on the side that says surface friction tester. <laughs> right. But I'm wondering how widespread the practice is to take a car and repurpose it for something that it wasn't originally designed for. Maybe it's, maybe it's very widespread, but converting, like we have a picture we've used online before of a VW bug that was turned into a snowplow. 
Yeah, and there's also a picture on this link he, that you just sent us that shows a cutaway drawing of the car with a a, a smaller wheel than the four road wheels some, somewhere below the back end with a mechanism that looks like it can raise and lower it yep. onto the ground. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like a pretty interesting little piece of equipment. Yeah, the whole thing is kidding. Go far enough. Yeah. To, Go ahead, <laughs> I said, if you go far enough back, um, you know, the Model T was sold as a very utilitarian vehicle. Oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I've seen pictures of, you know, where Ford advertised that if you uh, took off one of the rear wheels and added uh, a pulley, you could then drive uh, farming implements from it, you know, like, a, a, you know, a, uh, a, a grain grinder, you know, so you can things like that, you know. Yeah, you, I've seen uh, reproductions of Model T accessory catalogs that had everything from washing machines to sawmills you could run off a rear wheel, you know, belt. Good grief. Uh, yeah, the Model T was the probably the most accessorized car prior to the 1980s or something, but, but could you uh, ar- could you argue that the Model T was made for those purposes? Yeah. So he's you saying say the that, same that, thing yeah. about the Dochevo too. Henry Ford was a very, very right. practical-minded farmer, you know. But back to the broader question of cars being used for other things, yeah, lots of it through history. One of the ones that jumps to my mind is that uh, back when uh, the, the uh, U.S. Air Force was still heavily involved with the U-2 aircraft, that thing had such a very long wingspan and narrow fuselage that uh, not only did it have to have little wheels on the tips of the wings for when it was taking off and landing to keep the, you know, the wings from scraping the runway, but it had to have a chase car on the runway basically to talk to the pilot and make sure he was all straight level and lined up and everything. And they, I believe they used uh, turbocharged Buicks for that job in the 1980s. Close. I think it was, Cam- well, it was Camaros uh, in the eighties. Uh, Buick motors were used for something else. I can. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of things. <laughs> but, okay, so well, we're talking about taking a car, cutting a hole in it, and making it do something that it wasn't originally designed to do. Isn't that yeah. like ninety percent of the spirit of American automotive building? <laughs> 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 or am I like really confused? Well, well I mean, I, actually, it, it could be both, but you know. Yeah. Then you got all the hearses and ambulances and flower cars. Mm-hmm. All right, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Airport limousines, you know, if you've ever seen a stretch car with like four or five doors on each side. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, geez, all kinds of things. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on some of them. But yeah, we've all seen crazy things made out of ordinary cars that were you know, built to do practical jobs. Right. So if any of our listeners have actually seen something like this in person, a car that's been completely and totally repurposed, maybe to something unexpected. Uh, please take. How many swimming pools have we seen in the back of Ford F one fifties? Because you know that thing ain't going anywhere anyway. <laughs> I had a hockey rink in the back of one I rented one time. Wow! <laughs> so please send us these these images or these stories if you have them, and uh, we'll definitely share them on the podcast. Um, second question: Our friend Robert Drake says uh, he sends a question. He says you actually have to drive it in Atlanta or Boston traffic, which I don't know what kind of you know. Dante <laughs> Drake has been reading it, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> but he says, would you rather have a saline Mustang or a Ford 40 GT to drive around in Atlanta or Boston traffic? What fresh hell would that be? <laughs> that's, uh, that's my first instinct is like, yeah. what the hell did I do to him? <laughs> All right. Which, which circle of hell is I-285? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll walk. Thanks. <laughs> Because it's got two Fords as your choices, so that rules Misty right out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm walking. I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll just be walking right down 285 like an escapee from the Claremont Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> I never connected oh Misty and Claremont Lounge. I never would have put oh those two my. together in the same sentence either, actually. So, uh, th- I mean, Robert, really? Two Fords, a Salient Mustang, or a Ford 40 GT? Okay. I'm assuming it means a GT40. Yeah. yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah. it's a GT40. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to wait in here. I'm going to say I would go with the Mustang because I've had Mustangs and and um, even though the saline upgrades are going to make it worth more than than you know 
two thirds of of the people on the connector. Um, I'm not, you know, it, it's I'm gonna I'm going to feel less bad when it gets dinged or damaged um, than I'm probably gonna feel about the the GT40. And I think the thing further, um, he picked t- Atlanta's bad. We know Atlanta's bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Boston is just phenomenally confrontational. Boston's and, the only place I've ever missed a flight because of traffic. Yes, yes, it, it, it's yeah. Basically, tra- you know, traffic lights and, and traffic rules are merely suggestions there. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, you know, the real thing goes down. I'm not going to drive in Boston. I've driven all over the world. I've driven to Mexico City. I'm not going to drive in Boston, no matter how nice the cars you can put me in. Right. <laughs> I I agree with Dave. Yeah. Tim, what do you think? Um, only because it uh, comes standard with an automatic transmission, I'd go with the uh, the, the GT. Ah, the GT. Now you're yeah. thinking about the, and, the the current GT, not the actual GT40 from the 60s. Oh, you mean the the car that was built by Lola? Um, I mean Ford. Ford definitely Ford. Uh, <laughs> we don't know well, which okay. one Robert was really implying. So I'm sure he gotcha. means a new. Gotcha. I'm sure he means a new one. Okay, yeah. Well, if we're going the new one, then yeah, it would, it would definitely be the, the Ford GT. Uh, just be, and just because I have a uh, a. a deep amount of respect for that car. Sorry, Misty. Um, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, that was a private message. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That was a private message. All your, all your furniture, furniture talk. Yeah, all the <laughs> daggum furniture. Although, although I have to say, I'm kind of disappointed in the challenge level of this question because he's like, oh, Atlanta or Boston. I'm like, Paris, come on. Paris First traffic? of all, yeah. I mean, first Rome. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, we, we're not even talking about Rome. You know, yeah. first of all, the, the roads are like this big. Or in India, know. where not only are the yeah. laws just suggestions, but traffic court is instantaneous. Whoever yeah. wins the fist fight afterwards was right. Right, right. Which actually yeah. happened to me one time in on a trip to India because I was like, it was like 10 a.m. and I was like stuck in traffic on this little back yep. road, and my taxi driver like says, he's like, "One moment, ma'am." I'm like, first of all, dude, drop them, ma'am." <laughs> Okay, ma'am. Um, so yeah, you know, he gets out, you know, locks the doors, and he walks back up. He says, "It'll be just a moment." There's two taxi drivers having a fist fight. Yes. It's like, like, okay. Yeah. Ben, what do you think? I was think? wondering which one might. Be- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Ben. Sorry, we didn't yeah. ask Ben. Ben, saline or or the forty GT forty. I would go with the Mustang uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, you know, because not only, of course, we say Atlanta traffic, we're all picturing the worst of 285. Not all parts at all times are like that. But right. that, even that said, the pavement is pretty crap, crappy in a lot of town. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that even with sporty modifications, the Mustang suspension is g- going to be more tolerable for a longer period of time. Uh, you can get it with either kind of transmission, depending on, you know, what you feel like. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's, it's based on a real world road car. So in yes. a city with traffic issues, it would definitely be the way to go. Yeah. Well, I was wondering, uh, if you're, let's say trying to change lanes in a Mustang versus a, a GT, right. When you put on that turn signal and you've got the, the quarter of a car overlap with the car that's in the next lane and they might be smart enough to go, he's driving a Ford GT. He probably has a better lawyer than I do, I should go ahead and let him in. <laughs> right. Okay, now now that is a very salient point. If they even see the thing with how low it is. Oh, oh right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> might not work in front of, uh, yeah, your typical uh, jacked up pickup truck. Well, I, I just want the saline because it's going to be noisier. It's going to be a lot more intimidating, I think. Um, you know, it's it's got a lot of front line, just straight line power, which is all you're ever going to get on the interstate at at the at during you know rush hour for Atlanta or Boston anyway, um, I mean you could do it in a GT, but I I I just I don't know. I'd rather do it in a Mustang, saline specifically. But I'm, everyone's I'm like, still yeah, walking. Yeah. I'm still walking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got you know. I mean, I I got like three relatively new pair of Nike tennis shoes. So I'll be all right. <laughs> So that's it for that's all I've got today. You guys have anything we should talk about before we wrap up trivia? Oh, speaking of MX fives, if anybody wants one of the anniversary models in orange, it's also for sale at my dealer. Really? How much is it mm-hmm. going to cost me to get it here though? I don't know. That's not my problem. 
<laughs> but I mean, you're, you're you're coming over anyway, you know. So you just you're you're just coming to to, to I pick mean, it up. I drive fast, but I can't drive fast to skirt all the way across the Atlantic. That's uh, that that's sounds a, like a, uh, sounds but like you a can problem. pay. You can pay the Delta Airlines cargo to fly it home from Amsterdam. Oh, that's true. You can. That's that. right. Yeah. And, and 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 with with Delta being part of the uh, whatever Sky it team. is, Sky Team. Yeah, that's it. Although I would recommend if you're going to fly from Amsterdam to Atlanta, if you can't get a KLM flight, please get Air France. I have, but do not get Air France if you have to have breakfast. Air France for dinner <laughs> flights. KLM or Delta for breakfast flights. Having yeah. having worked spent most of my career working with Air France and with KLM, um, the Air France product is delightful. the The service is wonderful. The crew is fantastic. For supper, the, yeah. The motto of that corporation, though, should be "This this is not possible." Mm. <laughs> well, that, well, that, that, well yeah. I mean, actually, I think they borrowed that from 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 the Dutch because you know when when I first moved here, anytime you call customer service, that you know that they. Uh, I don't know. I can't do that, and that's not possible. Yeah, my experience is anything Delta can do with two people, Air, uh, KLM can do with five, and Air France can do with thirty-six. Jeez. That's because <laughs> that's because the Dutch yeah. have to talk it to death, and and the French keep taking early retirement. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still keeping my eyes open for uh, air airfare bargains, so we'll see. Hopefully, I can make this happen. It would be kind of cool. I've never been to I've ne I'm, I've not been to France nor Netherlands, so right. And as speaking of trying to import a vehicle into the US from Europe from a getting a getting it licensed uh and tagged in the US, that's generally a very difficult process because uh you have to have a car that was made for to be sold in the US because there's often different emission standards and Crash test standards. Our emission standards are better than the U.S. So I don't know what the problem is. Jealousy. <laughs> yes. Well, it, <laughs> it's money. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. Although, but, I, actually, actually, I, oh, I do. Sorry, I do have a uh, an online friend who uh, currently he's German, but currently lives in Schwabing and uh, in the in the Netherlands. Um, and what he what used to live in the U.S. when he was working on the Hubble Space Telescope uh, project. Uh, he bought a Miata here in the United States and then took it back to Germany. Um, and he was able to do that, but he had to return it a hundred percent to stock. Uh, you know, he had, he had done a few minor modifications, but in order to get to, for it to pass their, their MOT there, it, right. it was a little bit of a, a climb to do that. Oh, and Switzerland is even more insane. Uh, I know this because the uh, you know, Lotus Elan forum that I hang out in, all these people who you know are taking care of cars built somewhere between 1962 and 75. Uh, and most of the forum users are British. A fair number are European. A lot of them are British expats in Europe. And some of the insane things that are required to take care of an old car in some of these countries, uh, you know, due to the you know the modern focus on safety and emissions and things and the one guy in switzerland was saying something about how everything had to be completely dead stock on his 1960 something lotus to even think about registering it there uh even right, in, even in cases let's, yeah let, let's let's save this i think there's an entire episode on how to import yeah. and register a car so oh uh, yeah we could talk well, about that in more detail for another another time Although yep. one last point, what I yep. will say, if you want to come to Amsterdam, fly into Amsterdam for 70, well, actually 35 euros, depending on how early you leave, three and a half hours, Amsterdam to Paris, fly out of Charles de Gaulle. Oh. I believe hell borrows its design from Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> I, no, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, having flown out of Charles, you know, having gone through Charles de Gaulle. Um, and having friends that made the mistake of going to New York via British Airways, um, I I actually found Charles de Gaulle much easier to navigate because the last time I actually went through Charles de Gaulle, you could go to the website, and if you especially if you were transferring, uh, you know, uh, you know, as a transfer, you could literally print out a map of where you had to go. So, uh, so for me, it's Amsterdam, Charles de Gaulle. LaGuardia. I will never, ever, ever go through O'Hare again. I just refuse to go through Detroit. 
Um, and I will never go through Gatwick or uh, Heathrow. So if you're traveling with Misty, just forget it. <laughs> yeah, if you're traveling with, with Misty, don't. Right. <laughs> I'm entertaining and All I'm right. fun. <laughs> Next and week, next week, our guest is going to be Richard Prince. Richard Prince has published a book on Corvettes, and he's the photographer of this very cool book. It's sitting right here behind me, um, but he's going to be our guest. We're going to talk about this thing. I'll send you guys a link to the book in advance. Um, and uh, and then after that, the week after that, we've got a fellow named Dan Plan. Dan is uh, uh, a fellow podcaster. He's uh, in very much into auto racing in particular, so uh ben contacted dan or ben and jen both contacted dan and set that one up so we're going to uh, talk to him on the fifth um so anyway that's what we've got looking forward to with the thing about cars thank you as always for joining us for this podcast and um yes we have a trivia question to do thank you dave (laughs) because all that monroney stuff that's that's yes okay i'm dying to know the answer what's a monroney enable is it yes misty I have no idea because I wrote it on my hand and now it got wiped <laughs> off. So I don't know what my answer was. Is a Monroney label the new car window sticker uh, that was mandated by a bill sponsored by Oklahoma Senator Ulmer Mike Stilwell Monroney in 1958? Uh, is a Monroney label uh, referring to the bottles of scotch uh, or the bottle of scotch with two glasses in the glove box of a 1959 Cadillac Eldorado Biarritz? Or... Um, were they records that were produced and distributed for free, royalty free, to radio stations by General Motors in the late seventies? Uh, Tim, do you remember this? Uh, yes, I do. So okay. you go last. Let, you go last, <laughs> Dave. What do you think? You know, th- so experiences, Tommy. I, w- I want one of the first two to be true. I want it to be Scotch. I want yep. it to be records. When I am divided between two really excellent choices, pick the boring one. So I'm going to go with the window label. The window label. <laughs> I'm going to go with the window label. The other two, you know, the other, two, I I want them so they will be wrong. Interesting strategy. Misty's already said she doesn't know. Do you have a preference well, here, Misty, or guess anything? Well, I mean, I'm I'm kind of like on you know like Dave's train of thought, but on the other hand, Oklahoma is not exactly known for their progressive thinking, especially when it comes to things like consumer safety. Oh. <laughs> um. I'm gonna have to go, Team Dave. Team Dave. I'm, 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 I'm letting Dave make my decision for me today for like the next twenty minutes. So it's the, it's so, the, yeah, it's so the, many people regret that decision on Team Dave. <laughs> That's why I put a time limit on it. So it's the Oklahoma Senator Almer, Mike Stillwell, Monroney person thing that you're both, yeah, banking on Ben. What is it? You know, I've been to Oklahoma a few times. It's an interesting place. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, much as I would love to pour myself a glass of 24-year-old Monroney Private Reserve while, you know, listening to the thrilling sounds of GM, uh, (laughs) I am actually quite certain that it is the the window sticker. Okay. Tim, what is the answer? It is the window sticker. (laughs) We is smart. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so we, we, we is very smart. Yeah. But I, I look at window stickers and I laugh at some of them sometimes because it's like, okay, you're supposed to show pricing options and others details as added to the car. Right. But I can't help think that every window sticker is a markup to a real invoice that's sitting in the back of the manager's office somewhere. Yeah, and it is. Yeah, yeah. So a window sticker is not factual by any sense of the Imagine. No, it's yeah. it's it's the consumer price. It's you know MSRP as equipped, and also uh, emissions data. That's or it. MPG yeah. rather. Yes, and, and right. also the you know the, the the standard features and optional features that are on the vehicle. Sure. And and, and I'm like ninety nine percent sure that they bumped that sticker price up a little bit so that when you go in and you say, oh no, I'm not paying more than this. You know, and it's actually lower. You're like, I got a great deal. Right. And you really didn't. Then you didn't. That's right. All right. Unless, of course, they're offering you 21K for a trade in. <laughs> <laughs> and full circle. And that's it. That's a wrap. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for joining us with The Thing About Cars. We will see you with another episode very soon. Hope you're all staying safe out there. Take care. See ya. Ciao. 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 Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.